Hey there YouTube, Arbana69 here. Yep, back again with another QNAP video for you. Following on from the series that I have been doing, I figured today we'd have a look at virtual machines on the QNAP TVS 951X. So what we'll need for this, obviously we'll need our NAS box, we'll need some ISO images, and we will need a machine to actually um, do the administration and the installation, and obviously view the images once they're installed. So without further ado, let's cut over to the laptop and see what the first stages we need to do are. Okay, so here we are inside the QNAP front end. First thing we need to do, or the first thing that I like to do, is go into File Station, I create a subfolder called VM, and then inside here I create individual folders for the OS's that I will be installing. The other thing that I've already done is in my Downloads folder, you'll see the images for the OS will be, download, will be installing. Now, I'm not gonna go into where to get these uh, ISOs from. The CentOS and Ubuntu one is very, very easy, just Google search it. Um, the Windows 10 one, there are many guides on how to download the Windows 10 OS off their website. So with that done, if we close the file station down, we'll open up our app station, our app center. Go to the very bottom and you'll see we have virtualization station 3.3.46 installed. What we're going to do is open this and just drag that up. As you can see here, we have no VMs currently installed at the moment. So the first thing we need to do is click on Create VM, and this will give us a new screen. You need to give your VM a name so it's easily distinguishable and finding, and findable rather. So we'll call this one Ubuntu Test. Optionally, you can give it a description if you want to. Now then, next thing you need to do is be careful and select the right OS type. Now, the reason that we're getting onto this video is because originally I was looking on how to install Mac OS onto the, uh, the QNAP boxes. As of yet, I've not found any guides on how to do that at all. I know how to do it onto a Windows machine, but I wanted to see if it was possible to install a um, Mac OS VM onto this box. If you do know how to do it, please drop me a comment below and let me know. I will be interested. Um, however, I do digress, so we'll get back on topic. So, yes, as I was saying, Select your OS you want, there's generic Android, Linux, Unix, and Windows. So we want a Linux. And then the next one, you can see all the various flavors of the OS you can install. So we'll start from the top, we've got the various CentOS versions. There's Debian, Fedora, Red Hat, SUSE Linux, Ubuntu, and OpenSUSE. We're gonna go with Ubuntu 18.4. Next thing you need to select is how many cores. I'm gonna give mine the full two cores. Next is how much memory you want the VM to have. Now, as I said, I've upgraded mine to 16 gig of RAM, so I'm gonna give mine eight gig, whoops. As you can see there, if we go more than the actual machine's got, it will give you an error message. Um, so we'll go eight gig. Click on browse to find the CD image. Mine are in the downloads folder. And we want Ubuntu, make sure you specify the right one. Next thing we want to do is select the location on the hard drive. These were the folders we created in the file station. So if we click on browse, go into VM, and you'll see Ubuntu there, we click OK. Next, you specify how much hard drive space you want it to allocate to this virtual machine. Now, as I won't be keeping the machine or doing anything with it, I'm just gonna give it 10 gig of space. You can give it more if it's a machine you're gonna be using, and I would recommend that you do, but for this, we're just gonna give it 10 gig. The next thing is the adapter, so it can connect to the outside world. It uses the virtual switch. And the last option is set VNC password. This means every time you boot the, VN, um, the VNC machine up, um, it will ask for a password, password to get into the machine. I'm not gonna bother with that at the moment. It will warn me. As I said there, we strongly recommend you use a VNC password to create a secure VM environment. Select back to set as VNC password or click create to continue without one we're not gonna bother with a password because this is purely just a test machine. So if we click create, and there we go, that is the machine ready to install. Now, as soon as we power this machine on, if I click and start, it will start to install the OS. Now this does take a while, so I will start it off and then we'll come back to the video in a second. So if we power it on, and then click on the image, it'll start to load up and here we go. And this is the start of the installation. Now, for all this is running from the local machine and installing to itself, it does take a while to run. So we have to set the options first. So we'll go English and just install. We're gonna leave most of these options as default as we go through the installation process. 
So we want English UK, leave it as English UK and continue. We want normal installation and download updates while installing. We'll not bother as I won't be keeping this installation. If you are going to keep it, I would suggest you do the updates as well. Continue. We're not going to use any of these options. Again, it's up to your discretion what you're going to be using this machine for. I will just install now. And then we do continue. It warns you that anything on disk will be destroyed as it's a brand new disk we're using or a virtual disk we're using. That's fine. Next, we're asked to specify our, ta specify our time zone. We'll click continue. And now we need to personalize it. So give it a name, our name, we'll put that in. Choose a password. I'm just gonna choose password as the password. It warns me it's a weak password, but that's fine. You can choose to log in automatically or require my password at login. We'll leave it as require my password. We'll hit continue. And now the installation actually starts. This does take quite a long time, so I'm going to come back to this once it's finished installing. A few moments later. Okay, so the installation is finally completed. Like I say, it does take a while for the installation process to complete. Once it's done, you'll be prompted to restart. So if we just click on that now, this will restart your VM. Again, this will take a few minutes. So we're prompted to remove the installation medium and press enter. We'll just press enter. Now I have shortened this clip because it does take quite a while to get the, the reboot to go ahead. Once we're in, we'll be presented with our name. So we click on that, put in our very secure password of password, sign in. And here we are presented with the uh, Ubuntu desktop. So if we'll just skip past this, skip past this, skip past this and hit done. There we are, we are now into the Ubuntu desktop. So you've got everything you would normally expect to see. Not familiar with this, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, but we've got Firefox browser, files, the rhythm box, uh, LibreOffice writer, the software, and then your applications draw at the bottom here. So once you've finished doing anything you wanna do within uh, Ubuntu, if you wanna come out of it, just click on the top, click on the power button, and you have the option of cancel, restart, or power off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna power off this and then we'll look at a Windows um, installation on the VM. It's very, very similar. Okay, so here we are back in Virtualization Station 3. And as I said, we're gonna install a Windows VM this time. It's very, very similar to the last one. So before we click Create VM, as you notice, it's on generic for the OS type. As soon as I start typing Windows, it will detect that and change this to Windows OS. There we go. So we'll call it Windows Test. And again, underneath here, you can select the various flavors of Windows to install. And going as far back as uh, XP and Vista, we're gonna go with Windows 10. We're gonna use both cores. And again, we're gonna give it eight gig of RAM. Now, as before, we select the CD image. This is in my downloads folder. And there we are, the Windows 10 ISO. And again, the hard drive location was that folder we created before in the file station under the VM folder. So if we go underneath there, and there's Windows 10, and this is where the Windows 10 installation will happen. I'm gonna give mine 50 gig of disk space because I know Windows is a little bit more hungry than Linux is. Um, actually, you know what? I think we'll up that to 100 gig of disk space. We're gonna leave it at the virtual switch. I'm not gonna set a password, and we'll click OK. We'll click Create. Give it a second while it thinks about it. And now we're asked if we want to do an auto installation of Windows. For this purpose, we're going to click cancel and we'll do it ourselves. So there's our new Windows VM ready to boot. So if we click on that, power it up and then go into it. This will now load the VM for us. And as we can see, Windows is now starting to boot. We'll just, there we go, hide that. Now this does take quite a long time before it comes back with the options for you specifying where to install Windows to, etc. So I'm gonna pause this recording and we'll come back to it once it's caught up. So here we are in the language selection screen. We're gonna leave these as English UK. Hit next, do install now. And this will start the, uh, the installation procedure. 
Right, for this one, since I won't be keeping the Windows VM, I'm just going to say I don't have a product key, and that will give me a timed version of Windows. We can select which version of Windows we want from the ISO I have done. I'm just going to go with Windows 10 Home and hit Next. Yeah, accept the license terms, go Next. We'll do a custom installation, Windows only, 100 gig volume, And there we go, that is Windows now starting to install. So I said this will probably take a few minutes to do. Um, Windows has copied. We'll leave this and come back, to, come back to it once it's finished installing. So there we are, the installation is uh, almost complete now. It's finished copying the files, setting everything up, and now it's rebooted the uh, virtual machine to boot back into Windows. So hopefully within a couple of seconds, we should be presented with our Windows desktop. So as if by the magic of editing, that took way longer than I was expecting. Um, well, let's carry on. So, United Kingdom, another just a moment. Hopefully this won't take as long as the last time. Here we go, keyboard layout, we'll go United Kingdom. Skip, we don't want a second keyboard. We have some important setting up to do. Fingers crossed this won't take long either. So, ask us to sign in with a Microsoft account. So, I'll put my details in. Oops. Put my password in. We'll create a pin. for that as we just want a, a basic setup we don't want anything fancy on this as I won't be keeping this VM at all do that later only say files to this PC so all the features you would normally see on a regular installation of Windows are available on this VM nothing is missing I'll just decline all the things I don't want to uh, don't use speech recognition. No. No. Basic. So I'm basically turning most features off and not accepting to send telemetry, etc., over to Microsoft on this installation. And here we are. It looks like Windows has finally finished configuring. Okay, and here we are on our Windows desktop. Close that down. And this will continue installing drivers, etc. in the background. Now, what you can do is, if you click on the little hamburger on the side of the screen here, you can see you've got various actions you can do with the VMs. You can change the display quality. Mine set to low, if we change it to high. And you can actually know it's sufficient. Okay. There we go, we get a slightly crisper. Um, display. You can change the full screen, you can send control and delete, various function keys, capture the screen, VM settings and VM information. But in essence, this is now a Windows VM up and running, as you'd expect. So I'm going to shut this down. As I am finished. So yeah, that's a quick rundown of how to install a couple of OS's as a VM on this QNAP TVS 951X. Now I'm assuming other NASA's in the QNAP range, it's a very, very similar process. It's not hard, it's not complicated, but it does take time, unfortunately. Now, I have edited some of the small, the longer scenes out of this, just to shorten this video down, otherwise it would be over an hour long. So do me a favour, if you found the video useful, informative or interesting, or anything like that, please smack the thumbs up or the thumbs down. But if you could also subscribe to the channel and ring the bell, it helps out immensely. And until next time, take care.